So the idea behind this uh, installment of Hello Drunk World is I kind of want to take an existing project that I have and I want to do some modification changes, potentially improvements, well hopefully an improvement. But I currently have a Gatsby blog that is just you know, my normal ramblings. I've been kind of touching up on it again since the whole lockdown um, episode has kind of started. And I want to see if I can add like a, a Mac style search bar to it so I can like I can search not necessarily for users but it potentially could be a you know, beneficial thing I want it's going to touch across different points so I'm thinking it's going to touch across uh, the likes of uh, using keyboard shortcuts to do something react portals really like you know render things outside of the main document and some sort of type ahead searching so should be interesting enough um, so I'm gonna flick this over to the screen capture so you should everyone should be able to see my screen so let's see I wonder can we so this is the the, the blog that we have at the minute um, that we're gonna try and manipulate so we can see we have a reasonable amount of posts. I wonder, so I, I, I use, it's sort of every one of these, I use Excaladraw, if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, maybe I haven't realized and maybe the dyslexia, so I struggle with reading and writing. That's where the fun comes in. So I wonder next to Excaladraw, can I drop an image in? Paste. Allow. Paste. Nope. Potentially not. We got a, a follower. Woohoo! Um, so, whoever just joined in there, so we're we're going to be adding search to the site, kind of like the Mac OS where we get spotlight. Oh god, I didn't know you get drag spotlight. That's quite fun. Uh, I want to build that in, but I want to do it all through JavaScript on my current blog site, so I can like search for posts if I want to quickly reference one. Usually, what I kind of find with my with writing the blog, it's not the case that I know something that someone else doesn't know. I know something and I want to make sure that I remember that in the future or I want to be able to share that knowledge with someone in the future. So the prime example would be if I'm making a point in a pull request, I I will explain the logic behind why I, made, I want someone to make that change, but I also um, want to then reference to say like, okay, this is the reason and the logic behind that as well. Um, so let's kind of draw that out. So I always use Excel, Excel draw to get started. Um, it's annoying me, you can't copy an image. We'll try it one more time. So if I try and screenshot this and then drop it in the Excel draw, what will happen? Nothing. Ah, fuck it. Doesn't matter. Right. So we'll pretend like we draw it. Um, this is our blog. Page. We have like some text at the top, page title, and then we could copy this, and then we'll have some blog post. And for our blog post, we'll go get some lore nuts in. That little follower thing is sticking there, and that is really annoying me. I might have to modify that. Yeah, get that out of the way for now. I'll tell you when someone follows me. So, get Lorna. Lorna is this, it seems to be like the de facto thing for whenever you want random generated text. I want one paragraph. We're going to generate that. I don't need that much. A little bit there. And if I go to Excalibur. I hope I'm saying this right, but I'm probably butchering the name of it. And it doesn't maintain any sort of indentation or spacing or whatever. I guess actually, can we just resize that? Oh, there we go. Nope, we're on the wrong thing. We got another random Twitch notification. I'm assuming that is another follower, maybe. 
as I said this at the start of it before the, the, most people joined in, this is my first time using Twitch to stream. I tried to follow some of what the things meant online, but I'll learn as I go. So ignore all that space and out to the side. This is our blog, let's say. So we got you know, two blog posts. I want to be able to then type in a key combination. No, maybe not a combination, we'll just keep type a key. A search window is going to pop up. So we're going to have a little search bar below up here. Um, we'll give that a background color of gray. Make it very, very like the Mac OS style. And then it'll have some text in the same search dot dot dot. Um, I think the key for that's going to be S. S makes it very logical for search. Um, so I think. I think that's what we're going to go for. Um, so when I hit the that are S and keyboard, when the pay, the blog posts of all posts, as in all the posts, is open, this will pop up. When we start typing, we'll have a list show up underneath as like a little type ahead, uh, and this will list out all of our posts. So imagine if that's the dividing line in between the posts. As we type, that list will get smaller and filtered in. This is potentially doable. We're going to find out soon. So, again, it's all running off dyslexicdeveloper.com, Gatsby website. The Gatsby is a very good static site generation tool. allows you to get up and running with a, a blog very quickly. I think I mentioned before, Google search that there's shit tons of uh, advice. Get a, a strong drink before we start coding. Let's close out some of these old terminal windows. Clear this off. So, so, oh, already feeling the effects a lot. Why? So, first things first. We want to find the page that controls this, the rendering of this page that has all our posts. Conveniently, I thought about this ahead of time, and it's um, our index.js page. And we can see it's already called blog. And this, this, all this more, more or less came with the Gatsby starter kit for me, so I didn't have to code a lot of this. I didn't have to really deal with a lot of it. Gatsby uses GraphQL, all that kind of stuff. Again, if you want to learn about Gatsby, there's tons of really good tutorials and live streamers. I think. Jason Lansdorf is the one of the main people involved with it, and he live streams on Twitch all the time. So uh, keep a shout out and watch for him. So I want to be able to first. I, I want to get a list of all. Actually, no. Right, no. We'll start off with when I type the letter S on my keyboard, something appears. So first, I want to be able to capture keyboard input. Luckily enough, I have something I prepared earlier. So if I go to Chris Lachlan npm, I have a I have a React package that handles keyboard shortcuts for me already. Is it tilde? Yeah. So I have this package React short keys. And Thanks to my designer wife, Lovey Designs, who created the logo for it. I look over to her as she sits there. So, this package allows me to have a React component that is listening to keyboard events. I can say on certain keys, trigger a certain function. So, let's create up a component for this. So, I want to go components and then. Kind of, I created a folder structure already, but we'll we'll get started with this. So I have a post search. When I say post, I mean blog post. Um, 
So let's create a React component. In uh, WebStorm, my editor choice, fuck VS Code, uh, I have a bunch of like pre-configured things where I can set up you know, uh, a file for me. So I want to have the, I want to create a component called post search. And the component name is going to be post search. So the file name is post search, component name is post search. Probably could have written some sort of script to fix that for me too, but I also broke it where it doesn't put in the component name down here. Um, for now, we will not think about prop types. I don't even think I have them installed, so we'll forget about prop types. So this is just a functional component, does nothing else. Let's, um, let's try and pull in our React short keys to see if we can at least log out what happens. So I first need to install it. Although WebStorm's quite good, where I can just import this anyway. So we seem to be importing key press from, so, Maybe make this a little bit bigger since it's a it's a small component. I wonder can I change my default text size? Editor general try size. Ah, font size. Let's bump you up. Go for eighteen. Okay, they're not that much. So we've imported React short keys. WebStorm's kind of cool where if you do an import and it doesn't look like it's a relative path to a file or something like that, it assumes it's an NPM package and then it gives you the option to say, I want to install that. Um, I don't really, well, okay, I want to install it. I don't want it as a dev dependency, I want it as a normal dependency. So that's going to pull away in the background. I wonder if I fix that. Yeah, we'll do 22 apply. Okay. So we've installed that. That's going to run off in the background and do the npm install. So then we get these two functions on keys and key press. Well, let's just copy the whole thing in. So our on key press, we're just going to make this a console function for now because I want to actually see if I give it the right key, is it going to do the right thing? The drink is already kicking in and I'm failing to type. So console.log key was pressed. Uh, and I noticed from the documentation that it's pass. It's being passed in numbers, which I imagine are the the key codes. When I say I imagine, I I was the one who created this, and I still remember much of it. But it's the key codes for the keys that I was doing. So I need to find out what the key codes are for. Well, for the letter S. I wonder do I have it anywhere in the documentation on GitHub? I vaguely remember doing something around this. If not, so we go into source. This is a really useful tip as well. When you're dealing and working with a package, don't be afraid to dig into the source of the code because that can sometimes like unleash certain things that you know could be obvious when you see it, but people just don't put it in the documentation. Um, so we have utilities. Let's go back. What about objects? Do we have a list of key codes? We do. So what is letter S? Letter S is A3. So there you go. I could have Google searched this, but I was already on the GitHub page. I find it. So, what was that again? 83. So, if I pass this, 83. So, that looks fine now, but we need to actually use this post search. So, if we go back to our index.js under pages, is it just me or is that still not showing up bigger? For 30. Apply. I was doing nothing. Go to edit. If anyone knows how to increase the font size in WebStorm, 
Well, that means oh, I haven't liked Google. You would imagine this would be piss easy to do. Yeah, increase, increase. Uh, I can do some already. Yeah, fuck it, we'll go right. I can always just pinch the zoom every time we come in here. So, well, it's not terribly small, anyway, but we'll, we'll deal with this. So then, I, right, we have our post search component. We want to then pull that in and use it on our index page. So we have some random components that aren't really rendering children at the top, like our SEO on our bio. So we'll drop it in after here. So again, we can do post search and WebStorm being as good as it is, kind of feels where I want to go with this. And um, we can auto import. We don't have any props. I think I need a new line there just so it's a little bit more contextually aware. But I also need to run this locally. So I do npm start, I think it is. Yep. So this is just running Gatsby locally so we can build it our thing. This shouldn't take too long, knowing me it will. And I'll probably crash because I haven't done it in so long, but we'll see how it goes. Let's just double check the WebStorm installer our plugin for us. Yep, so we've changed this there, uh, package JSON, and that's where it added our React short keys. We're almost there, almost there. Trying to top up the wine. and flick over to Twitter. So right, so we go back. So we've loaded this up successfully. It's running on localhost 8000. So let's grab this, uh, open in our browser. So this is run local version, we got all our things. The slowness of this bothers me, but this isn't how it works normally. I think it's my streaming software is kind of causing a bit of lag in CSS animations, which is really frustrating. Um, we'll see how that goes. So we added to that console log statement. So we have some random stuff here, I don't really care about. But if I click here and then do the letter S, the key was pressed. You can see it counting up. So now let's think about what we're going to do next. We've got our key press working. When we do the letter S, something happens. The next bit is we want to be able to show that search box. So we need to build out that search box. So we go in there, search, post search component. Let's create like another component which will house our search box. So we go React, we're actually going to go React func component with no props because that probably would be cleaner. So we're going to say search box is the file name, search box uppercase for the component name. It's generating the component out for us. And so I was thinking about this way, we want to render this on top of the current DOM. So if I, if I was going to render this inline, so we'll, we'll show it that example. So if I do um, test, hello drunk world, I can spell drunk. And then if we, we'll add some state in here while we're here. So make use of React hooks, use state, and we're going to create some state. So we'll take a little drink and a little break. So anyone, anyone who's just joined into this, um, we're adding a, a Mac OS style spotlight search to a blog. 
So we have like a post search component where we can trigger actions based on the key login. Well, key presses. So we want to create some state. So const uh, show search. And it's going to be set show search equals use state false by default because it doesn't show by default. And then we can have a component. We need to also bring in a React fragment. Um, a React fragment because we want to wrap our key press and what we want to show. We could wrap it in a div, but you know React can handle these things for us, so why not just wrap it in a fragment? So then we do a conditional operator and we say well, we have our, what was this called again? Search box. So our search box component. So if show search is true, render the search box. Um, again, our function here. So instead of doing uh, our console log, we want to actually call, we want to change our state from true to false. Um, we'll, we'll probably do a thing where we can flip it for now. So pressing the key shows it and pressing the key hides it just for now. Um, so let's do this. So we do uh, set show search equals not so show search. That allows us to flip what the current value is and then set that value. Let's see if this works. So we can see it's rebuilding. Is up to date. It's weird that that doesn't go back. Uh, we're going to fall into scoping issues in this, but we don't care. Um, we just set that to true for now. We don't want to actually flip it on the same letter, we want to change it on a different letter. Reloaded, so I'll re reload the page to clear out the DOM. We do S, see the search. I wonder because I want this to disappear on escape. What is escape? We go back to our key codes. ESC, I think we escape is 27. So let's create this and say on key 27. We want to set search set set the show search What's the tongue twister to false. So I flick back to our app. Oh, got a typo. That's like another really cool thing. Like um, Gatsby, it must be built off some of the similar tech that Create React app and all those kind of tools are built off. Where like when an error is out, you just don't see a white page. You see a page explaining what the error is that you would have seen in the console in your terminal and the console in your dev tools, uh, which is, just makes debugging far much quicker. So, uh, t -t -t. let's see if I do S, we should do escape, we hide it. So, okay, we're building up some functionality. Yeah, okay, that must be great. Tapping heavily on the keyboard in front of the mic. So, let's go back to our. ID. So we kind of we have that logic down. Now we need to like manage what our search box is, our box is. But as I was saying, when we show that it's sh shown in line, I kind of want it to like hover above. Uh, whether we get there or not is another thing. What I'm thinking we can use is React portals to do this. So we just search React portal. So React has this concept of the portal. So if you if you think of React as as a tree structure, uh, the same way like you know your DOM is, and it starts with one node and then multiple nodes and multiple nodes and multiple nodes. Uh, whenever you're rendering, you're rendering into that DOM tree. Whereas sometimes you may want to place something outside of the tree. Now you can do that in a hacky way, but React has a way that like it can manage the rendering and the processing of all that information. 
but outside of the current tree. So skimming the docks here, it seems like we can do like create a portal and then render children, DOM node. It might be something a little bit more better for us. Um, I wonder is there a portal hook? Someone's probably written an abstraction around it. Um, easy portals with React hooks. The second one sounds better. So, blah blah blah, creating the toggle, blah 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 blah, couldn't give a fuck. Um, using the toggle, just the portal. So it just looks like we return a React create portal um, instead of returning a component. So I kind of thought anyway. That looks to be it. So yeah, so they're doing like modal. So I think we can just do the same. So our search box is going to be a portal to component. Um, so we do import. React DOM from React DOM and um, copy pasta of this and what we want. Um, we can just make this test. Now, it's got modal root. We want to call this search root. And we're going to have to actually add this to our HTML, which I wonder will it exist. Guess we must have some sort of static public content. Public looks auto generated, so not that static. Is there not like a standard HTML? Um, this is our dev version. What does our elements look like? So. We have this. We have a body. I wonder if we could just maybe just embed into the body. A check first. I'm looking for like a HTML file. That is like our index.html. Which I imagine I thought that it would have generated. That feels auto-generated. Yeah, and because it, it's ignored, so it's definitely auto-generated. It's not something we should be modifying. There is a static directory but that doesn't look like it should be important there is a hack that we can do to handle this if we can if we can if we can let's see I wonder if I just google search what do you want to search for no, okay, sorry, you pick, pop, pick that up. Um, so I want to do React Portal with Gatsby to see if there's something. That... This, this is the thing I find interesting with Gatsby. No matter what it is you're looking for, you'll find a plugin um, that handles that for you. Hey. The Shaw, which I assume is uh, Dan Shaw. Um, yeah, so Gatsby always seems to have a plugin. I, I think it's because of the way Gatsby does the static site generation, how it builds its products. You can't just use standard libraries and standard, like you can use them, but you can't use them in the standard way that they're built. There always seems to be some sort of connection, some sort of uh, process involved in that, which is. Um, Okay, in certain instances, but I, I, I'm always weird for the case where like I want to use something and there isn't a plugin, and if I don't know how to write that plugin, how the fuck am I going to use that? Um, so it seems like portals. So if you want to use React portals in your Gatsby site, there's a simple way to add the required element to your portal, which is in the public HTML file. Okay, this is what we kind of need to do. Why is this this way? Blah 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 blah. If in doubt, let's follow the instructions. So we're gonna kill our app, clear this out. So when we pull in the portal, then 
we need to add that to our plugins directory. So it'll create it must create the DOM element for us that we can then attach our portal to. So while that's going off, we're gonna to go to our Gatsby config and at the very end we're gonna add in our portal plugin. It seems to be the key is just portal, which yeah, that that suffices, we can use that. Then blah 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 blah, I don't care about this. This is an element, this is an element. Yeah, so get element by the portal. So yeah, that's that's what we can use. So let's go back to the terminal, it's finished installing. Yep, so npm start. Let's go back to search boss. Oh, we spelled that wrong. That should be search box. Function of six. Um, instead of search root here, we're going to fire in portal. So now that should attach to the portal test. Go back to our post search, search box, search box. We need to update our reference there because we changed it. I think we, I changed it. Uh, I fat finger typed it. So I'm going to drink water going. Oh yeah, I probably didn't explain the start. Like this is the the Hello Drunk World series, so I'm getting drunk. I'm vaping because I'm trying to quit smoking. Um, I'm swearing, so don't watch it with your kids in the house. So that's compiled for us. So if we go back to our site, refresh, fire up the console because some something's not not going to work. This is probably going to fail somehow. Make sure the console clear it. Type S. Now we didn't see any up here, but if I go to elements, we have our portal element. Under here we should have our modal test, which is hidden out of view. So this is actually quite good. So now we have something that we can start styling. Now we, as you can see, like it exists outside of the, the DOM tree, so we can use position and we can do all that, and it's not constrained by the parent DOM elements. Whereas if this lived you know, here, or above where this like title was, we would have to, you know, pull it out of there and do some really hacky CSS to really place it positioned in the middle of the screen. So, Moodle's probably not the best name for this. We'll call this search. Actually, no, we're not going to we're not using normal CSS. We're going to use style components because that's the way I build things. Style components. Uh, styled from style components. And then we're going to create a new style component. So we can create like a React component that we can apply styles to. Um, so we're going to go styled search box equals style dot div. It's going to be a div for us. Everything's a div when you don't care about semantic HTML. Because you're a JavaScript developer and you didn't learn what all the different tags actually are. Oh. So instead of our div here, we use that. Instead of our class name, we get rid of that. So we still have our test. We haven't applied any styles yet. So this is the kind of flow I usually go through when I'm trying to build something. I will create the style component with no styles, attach it to the React component, or you know, put place it in the DOM where I need it. Take a drink. Then think about right, how do I style this? I I started off as a JavaScript developer writing JavaScript for an embedded oops, OS on a tablet. Um, yeah, that sounds fucked up. It was before the days that Android was ever thought of for a tablet kind of operating system, and I think I think iPads existed at the time. But at the time, you know, if you weren't Apple, there was no other tablets. So we built a JavaScript operating system, put it on tablets, and shipped that. So I was writing, you know, 
pixel drawing, you know, canvas before canvas existed, you know, JavaScript. So I don't know what I barely know most of CSS. I know like Flexbox a little bit, but I you know try my best. So we now have the style component. We can tell it's the style component because it has our like you know gibberish class name. Let's start applying some styles. So I think I want to start out with positioning because I want it to position absolute you know fifty out uh, fifty pixels down from the top. So let's do position. Is it absolute? And this is a good trick where you actually before we do this, I wanna I wanna make sure I can see this. So we're gonna do border border and it's gonna be one, no, maybe three pixels solid and red. If you know, you know. This is like the, the age old trick. And then we're gonna do position, I think it's position absolute. And then I'm gonna do top zero. So now we can see that if you can see it up there in the top. So we managed to get up the top. Um, what is top? Is top pixels percentages all or is top just pixels? Um, let's go you know, 300 pixels. Maybe 200 pixels. 200 pixels from the top. And we want to bring it in from the left. I'm going to do left. Um, 50%. Okay, so now we've got that down. I'm going to go to so specific. 220. Oh shit. Yeah, okay, so it's kind of just under where like the little infographic, you know, informational bit appears. So now we've got this absolutely position where I kind of want it to be. I copy the styles out of the elements panel. I flick back to React, back to my style component, and paste them in. And uh, that seems to be like the, the easiest way to style things because you, you get this like interactive styling tool in the browser already. Take advantage of that. Um, the only annoying thing is because Gatsby kind of uses um, the like the re-rendering thing. Oh, hot reloading, hot reloading, uses hot reloading. Uh, it does that, but also still has my styles applied. So I have like the styles from Cycle Pump being overwritten by these styles, which is really frustrating. And I always have to re render. Uh, good man, uh, Dan, using the red as well. I, it seems, I, I remember seeing it once, and someone was like, you know, just put a border of red or make the text red, and then you'll, just, you'll find it on the page somewhere. Because no one has anything red on the site unless it's an error message. So chances are your standard page is always going to have you know, red on it. Take a little drink and get a little fill up. So I think we have um, we have this ability now. So now we can render this. Uh, I want to write. What is our next steps here? Uh, for me, I'm thinking we. So. Got this run in the middle. But yeah, that, that's, that's style out and build out our, uh, our bar. So, yeah, we need to start building it. So, let's, if we test out S, escape, S, escape. I will run a little time, so we might not style everything that are perfect. I want to be able to get some of our search functionality in here. So, post. I want to be able to pass through what the current posts are. I did actually build up a JSON element of what all the posts were on the site, um, but I actually realized then afterwards and you know, we have all the posts here, and I know from looking at this, the title of the post is our font matter title or the slug. I'm pretty sure we we'll always give a title. I'm pretty sure I've always given a title to the post. Um, we can use the same. We can use the same functionality. So let's um, let's build up titles list equals post dot map. So we want to take all the posts we have. We want to map through. I want to just get all the titles of them. I want to get the titles and the slugs actually, because we're going to use the slugs for the redirect. Because we want to then redirect whenever someone selects it. So we're going to say 
item. If and don't, I always use item. Um, it's, it, I know nothing else on this page is going to have a variable called item. So, titles list, we get every item, kind of based off what we have down here. I know our title can be either of these two. So, copy pasta. So, we want to save math through every one of them and return a new object. If you're ever confused about what different things to use when you're going through arrays, uh, Wes Boss has a really good course on, he calls it like array, fuck, it's like array aerobics or array exercises. And it's like, you know, what is the difference between a, a map, a reduce, a filter, a for each, an each, all that kind of stuff. Um, there is differences, they can all be used to do the same you know, result, but it, it's when and how you use them. And I'm a stickler for, in a code review, I will say, like, no, this is what you have to use. So we return, and we're going to do title. It's going to be, I know I copy pasted some of that crap, but we're going to go. So replace node with item. For our use case, it's using node below, but we want item. And then we want to say slug. Now, we're going to call it link. I don't, I don't, I don't want to use the term slug, even though that's what the, the J, or what do you call it? The GraphQL schema defines it as. So we've got our title list, and then we're going to pass our title list to our post search. Let's call the same variable and make it easier to use. We need to then absorb this as a prop and then kind of pass it through. If we were not strapped on time, we would be using like React context in this kind of case, like pass it down in a better way. <laughs> I realized as I was pouring the wine, it was right below the microphone as I was talking. Um, it's very good wine. I think on the last stream, I only managed to get one glass out of the bottle, or I managed to get two this time. So I think I'm doing well. You all good, mm -hmm. Mrs. Producer? Mm -hmm. Mrs. or Miss? Mrs. Yeah, I never know the I never know the difference between Mrs. or Miss. Mrs. Mrs. Is, married. is married. Miss isn't married. Yeah. I thought, I always thought it was the other way around. What's the teacher in Matilda? Uh, Miss Trunchable. No, no, the the other one that lives in the, Miss the college. Miss, Miss Honey. Yeah, she's not married. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Then. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, 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 it doesn't matter. Right, right, right. Back to this. Mrs. E, Mrs. I, Mrs. S, S, I, Mrs. C, Mrs. <laughs> so, right, back to this before I get you drunk to be able to continue on. Right. So, we've built up a list of all our posts. We're passing them down this tree structure. If we had time, we would use um, if we had time, we would use React context to you know create a context object, and then we could pass it down using the React context and the hooks and that kind of stuff. Fuck it, we can um, prop drill. If you know what prop drill and is search can see Dodds prop drilling. Very interesting blog post. So now this also takes in our title list. So we need to have a search that's going to be hacky as fuck, but we will figure something out. I'm helping on getting this to work. Fragment. So we create a fragment, and we're going to drop that in here. So, and then so that's our search box, and then we want to say. This is so we're going to make our search box an input. If I can type input and value. Now we're going to start pulling some state in. This is where the speed coding is hopefully going to save me or not. So use state. I'm going to say const search set. Search, use state, and it's going to be an empty string by default because they haven't searched anything yet. Search, 
close that off. So our input has a value. Obviously, it has to have some sort of value that we can track. We need an on change that's going to take an event, and then we're going to say set search. It's going to be event dot target dot value if I can remember. Then we want to say if search is not equal. Why was that plus one one? Uh, not equal to uh, an empty string. Then we want to render an or unordered list. I'm going to say an unordered list, and we want to map out our titles for now. No, well, I need to title this. We need to map them out and render list items for this. This stream's probably going to go over in our fuck it. I'm I'm kind of I'm getting the grid with this one, so we're going to see how it goes. It won't be longer than two hours, as I like to maybe just because my stomach's already grumbling for dinner. And then feed it to me while I'm eating. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I need to remember that this is still recording, and I'm still going to put this on YouTube. <laughs> just yeah, fuck it. It's, it's the hello drunk world. So, um. What we'll do anyway, right? If they've typed anything, we're just going to render the list no matter what. If in doubt, item. Um, oh, we need a key too. So, I I recommend not doing this, but out of laziness, I'm going to do it using the in, the rate index as a key. The main reason I'm building out this search is because of this. If I do key read this blog post, uh, pick and locks with React keys. It explains why you should never use the index as the key. Only do it as a last resort. There's better ways of doing this. Actually, actually, yeah, there is a better way for us. We have the link, which is a unique identifier on the item. So we can do re return, and we're gonna do an li, because we're inside of a list. And we're gonna say span, and it's gonna be item dot dot title so we're going to list out all the items we need a, a key because react needs to keep track of what we're rendering and how we're rendering it so we need to like put a key on it the key needs to be a unique identifier using it tail the tail of the r of that book was uh, if you use the index you get like zero one two three if you remove number two out of that list you still have zero one two you know, you now have zero, one, two, instead of zero, one, two, three. Um, two exists before, now it exists. Sometimes you may get weird, funky things where our list doesn't re-render, or when it does re-render, one item still exists even though it shouldn't exist. Moral of the story, don't use it. Uh, key is going to be item.link, because we know that's going to be unique to declare because every blog post is a different link. Hopefully, I wouldn't write the same blog post twice. And it would have helped if I typed item correctly in there. Quite on whoever's in the chat, they call me out whenever I fat finger type shit. So, if we have a search, we show the list. It's going to look like dog shit, but it's going to be something, I hope. So, let's go back to what we have. Obviously, everything fails. Can I read properly? Title of undefined. What matter? What are we missing? So, if we go back to our index. We are. So, it's saying posts. Dot map. Node. Node. Dot form. Form matter. We're doing post. Dot map. We're calling the item. Ah, fuck this call. Well, no, I don't want to call it node. So, can't get title of that. Am I missing something in here? I'm going to stick on the debugger. I'll go to sources and I'll bring this in a little bit because that's far too big for my eyes. Turn on break and on call exception and then boom, reload. This should catch it before it hits IR.
Okay, so let's walk the stack to see where we went wrong. I'll go back. So this, is, this is what I was going to show. There's a ton, ton, ton of React stuff I want to get to. That's not that. It's not that. Um, let's just log them out. And we're going to go fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, wait, item. So, center title this is empty array, we're logging them out instead. So do that see I want to see what it logs about us because then we can expect what it is and then we get our reassurances if they feel on the first occasion they might not be they might be empty because it has to fetch them from GraphQL somehow so right, refresh come on come on come on we haven't touched anything yet so it rendered out hmm so actually node is a thing. So that is an item has a node. So let's undo that. I think we're actually all right where we were. So we can say, yes, we can deconstruct this. This is one thing that annoys me about GraphQL. Everything seems has, has this node deconstruction in it and you have to be aware of that. I should have read that before on the map actually, yeah. Um, just get rid of the node, just give give me what I fucking want. That, that, this is what I asked for, I asked for items, I didn't ask for an items that were nodes. And then if there's nothing else other than the node, there must be, you know, I haven't seen a use case where there isn't something that isn't the node. So, refresh, we're still working. I do S, we get our input. Type. <laughs> Nothing happens yet. <laughs> kind of expected. Uh, title is this, right? So then we jump over to our React components compiler. Give React a refresh. Sometimes it can be funny with uh, these local builds. If not, I'm gonna have to console log everything out. Which I guess isn't a bad experience of how you would develop a production app. It's being dog slow. Don't know if that's just me or time. Okay, fine. So the React uh, dev tools aren't working for this site. That's fine. So we know that we built up this title list. Um, Title list dot log log that out just in case. Yeah, give a refresh. Got twenty two titles. So we got title link title link. So that's all the data that we need. We pass that to post search. Post search takes in title list. We then pass that to our search box whenever the search box is rendered because it only should be rendered whenever we type our key. If our search is not equal to any empty string, then we render our list element. Kind of want to wrap these in divs. Oh, what is this style search? Oh shit, that needs to be inside our style search. I don't think we just need that fragment anymore. Hmm, maybe not. So let that go. Even though it does the hot reload, and I always like to refresh it anyway, just to kind of make sure I know what's going on. So we do S, click on our input, S. Right, we get our list. Obviously this is dirty as fuck, but we're, we're, we're getting on time. Um, let's actually filter that list down. So we can then say const filtered list. Right, 
so we want to filter out this down into something we can maintain. So we want to do uh, quick and dirty filter is title this dot filter. And we'll say item. And we'll say item dot title dot includes because we now have the includes API in JavaScript. And it's going to include our search string. Now this isn't the globally aware regular expression style searching. This is just a very, very, very basic style searching. Um, then instead of taking our titles list, we take our filters, filtered list, and render that out. So again, refresh. I don't trust the, the hot reloading to do that for us. So we do S. You can hear let's do we're going to search for podcasts which should give us the top two titles or not hmm. why do you p it gives me everything with the letter p in it o doesn't you would imagine that would give us podcasts why doesn't it includes it's a string includes See, let's try JavaScript string search. Da, da, da. So includes is the new one. There's also index of. Can I want to just try index of? No, it's it's very old and we shouldn't be using it. I want I want to see right. Um, String includes MDM. I want to look at the MDM docs for it to see what the MDM says about it. So, st string prototype includes, includes it, is the thing we can search strings for. So, you can search it, you can do an optional position. I wonder, can you pass it any global regular expressions? Search type head search to see if someone's got an example for us. I imagine there's like a, a global search because includes the thing just does it from the start. I don't think it like handles midway through. Ugh, this is gonna be awful to read. Um what's the actual search? Where's the search? I shouldn't even be looking at W3 schools. W3 schools is dog shit. Let's do reg, regex search. Unless I'm going mad, like that should work. PO. There's a PO there, but then podcast. Oh, it's case sensitive. I need a case sensitive includes. Case sensitive. That's what I want. I guess. The easy way to do that then. Ah, fuck. Right. I forgot. Um, includes is case sensitive, so we're going to do dot to lower. To lower case. Dot includes search dot to lower case. That, that was the issue. I always forget, like, you know, JavaScript, strange enough, is it's case sensitive when it wants to be. Um, but that one I want it to be. If 
if I click on the wrong thing, right. So now if I do S, um, click here and do pod, we get podcasts. I want to really click on this, and I want it to take me to that link. Let's get the cheap and dirty way of doing that. So, so we're going to wrap our title in an A tag, which we're probably going to add maybe some style into it. We're going to do a uh, href. And we want it to be, so we actually, that's why we brought in the slug from our pages index, whenever we mapped over, we brought in the slug as the link, because I only wanted to be using it. So we're going to make this a template literal string. Um, so we're going to go backticks, forward slash, and then whatever this is going to be. So it's going to be um, item dot link. Um, I think that should work. We're missing something here. Yeah, no, we were, at, we were adding something extra. So I think this should work. So that's I'm saying that's kind of cool. Uh, bio styles. So if I go S, type in here, pod, and I want to go to this blog post. Uh, Try to take me to that. What is that? What is the link to that fucking blog post? So I need to a link to go to slash and then whatever it is. Hmm. I thought it was a slash, and then let's go back and inspect that. Oh, look at this pod. What is the link? It's, it's just doing podcast. It's not got the actual the slash on it. Pretty sure I set that here. The href is slash, then that. That should take us there. Why doesn't it? What if I might inspect this? What does the DOM look like? Slash slash podcast. If I ah, fuck you. If I edit this and then edit attribute. What if I take the first one off? And then click on it. Ah uh, okay, so the slug has the slash already, so I don't even need the slash, which means I don't need this to be a templated string. That means I can get rid of that and that, and now it's just the link. So go back to the root page, trigger a refresh, type S, we get a search bar, click on the search bar, type in pod, we get two posts about uh, podcasts, click on the second one, and it takes us to the page. So I think like, we achieved the goal, not the end result. I wouldn't ship this like the I say users, me. Um, but we went from zero to uh, typing a key, popping up an element, doing a search on some data on our page, and then navigating to that page. I think it was um, a successful enough kind of approach. So um, I'm going to flip back over to the full cam, have a drink, do a bit of a recap. If there's any questions comments you know things you want me to like you know maybe look back on comment on you know, dig deeper into fire away into the the chat that I, i've got going on at the minute um i can have a look at those and dress them if not i'm gonna do a bit of a just a a recap of what we did pour my last glass of wine and then have done hopefully yes this is the answer to that So I think the the goal we were looking to achieve. Oh, we get like six viewers right at the end. Okay, 
So the, the, the goal we were looking to achieve was going from a page that, I, I, I'm, I'm clicking on the page and you can't even see this, but um, a page that showed all, all the blog posts I had. And then whenever I typed in a key combination or just a single key, it would then trigger some sort of interaction. So that kind of played into like using the React portals. Um, the reason I thought about going down the React portals way was I wanted something right on top. I I use a Mac all day via work and via home, you know, program. And having like that, you know, the Mac search for like you know, opening up around my location is so intuitive, it's so natural, boom, right in your face. So I wanted something that would pop up above every all above all the other content, and I'd be able to start typing immediately. We didn't get to the type of immediately part. We had no. We could have added like a, an on focus hook or done something like that. But I think um, being able to get to that and then using the portal allows us to take away from the. I say the restrictions of being inside of a nested DOM structure and being able to like move outside of that was kind of interesting. Then we're easily able to like style, manipulate, deal with that kind of that data. Then I think backing off the already existing uh, GraphQL API that's built into Gatsby allowed us to like you know, dig into like a quick, easy way of getting all the blogs, getting like the title and the link to them, and then generating them, and then doing a bit of you know, ho hokey pokey chicken you know, magic, whatever, with um, style components and some React stuff. It was very quick and easy to like, like we got our search. If I type this in, I think the lesson I is always remember uh, string includes is case sensitive, which really is annoying and it doesn't have an option. As far as I know, it doesn't have an option to say, don't be case sensitive. Like you can't pass it uh, like a, a slash I or slash G or whatever flag like you would normally pass with a regular expression. Uh, it's, it's inherently case sensitive, which is a pain in the hole because if you're searching, your users aren't going to search case sensitively. They're going to search, you know, like I was typing POD and not getting podcast, but Paul, the P in the podcast was capital. So having that kind of like right to the workcase, to the work, to the workcase. One thing I'll say is like never manipulate and keep those values in state. Only manipulate on the fly because what will happen is you'll manipulate, keep them in state then potentially either save or return the values in a different case than what the user originally uh, you know, expected or had planned on. Um, but I think that is um, a kind of good conclusion to the Dissect Over number five, I think it was. Um, we'll figure out what we're going to do next. I think. Going forward, we're going to keep it on Twitch. Um, some little tweaks and issues we need to, I need to iron out. But this is a little bit more flexible, a bit more smooth uh, than YouTube. For anyone who stayed on for the one hour and eight minutes of this recording afterwards, fair fucks to you. Good luck. And.